Variable fonts are now supported in After Effects Beta, which will make animations like these a hell of a lot easier. In this video, I'll show you where to find them, how to use them, what you might animate with them, plus I've picked out some tasty free fonts you can get started with straight away. Hi, I'm Adam Bennett, this is The Video Shop. The two main places you can start looking for variable fonts, especially if you don't want to buy them, is Adobe and Google Fonts. Search for variable, unsurprisingly, and both pages will give you hundreds of font options. Notice this icon here, which indicates the font is variable. Over here, you'll find all the axes available for that font. In this case, we have italic, width, and height options. And you can preview how they look by dragging these handles here. By the way, does this font look familiar? I'll give you a clue, Netflix limited series. Okay, we'll make this a fun game. I'll give you the answer at the end. There are more axes options than just these three, and you can take a deeper dive on this Google Fonts page. Also, if you want a font with a specific axes, say italics, because you want to animate something like this, you can do that here too. I'll pop a link for this page below. You can preview the fonts and their axes on Google using the type tester feature. Lastly, if you want to buy a variable font, this is a great resource, v-fonts.com. There's some fantastic fonts here and some wacky options as well. We'll come back to font axes later, but let's look at how to use them. We'll stick with this font for now. And one reason to use the properties panel rather than the character panel is you can click here to reveal the axes and set how you want the type. Notice if I drag this all the way across, it's a specific font, in this case, extended black. But if I input a random value, it'll say custom. I'm going to choose wide thin, and this will be the default state of the type. I don't have any original ideas of my own, so let's recreate this animation from the website. If you've already used text animators in After Effects, you'll already be familiar with these options here. But we've also got a brand new shiny button here in properties to add animators, which gives you the same options. Either one will do, but I'll use this one down here so it doesn't get cropped. What's also new, and we didn't have before, is this bottom option. For this font, we have the three options that we looked at before. You'll see different options depending on the fonts. This font, Bedini Moda, has optical size, which adjusts the thinner parts of the characters so you can adjust it depending on how large you have the type. We'll look at some other axes options later when we look at my favorite font picks. But for now, let's get started on this. So you can add each axis individually or all of them at the same time. So we'll do that. And I've got font size 100 and I'm going to set the width to be 60, the weight 900, and then drag this over so it's italic. Just bump up the kerning to 20, and I've got optical kerning. Then in the range selector, we're going to go into advanced and set the shape to be ramp up. So you can see the letters are gradually getting thicker and slanting. And then if we drag the timeline marker over to the beginning and I'm going to set the offset to be 100 and keyframe that and then go to two seconds and then set that to be minus 100. So as we scrub through, you can see that's happening. And set the end of the work area with N, just preview that. And then I'm going to adjust the ease values to be 75% on both and then preview that again. And my comps, 30 frames a second. And I'm gonna just change this to time code by control clicking on it. And then we're gonna rename this animator narrow bold. So now if we duplicate this and we'll call this wide so we can just see what the different states are and the axis width i'm going to set to be 200 the weight 200 and then not italicized and then just go into these options i'm going to drag the keyframes across so they're exactly halfway between on frame 30. Then we have that. And then just to make it loop, I'm gonna duplicate both of those, pull them down to the bottom, press U, drag these keyframes across. And then here on frame 60 and then on frame 120, we have our loop points. So I'm gonna press N and then B. And I'll just pull in some timeline markers here and then just go to the frame before press n just preview this 
So we're going to loop an animation. So just to add a little bit of interest, let's animate the position and scale. So I'm going to separate the dimensions on the position and then the X position. Go to frame 60. And let's move this over to here. And actually, I like round numbers, so let's do 560 here. And then at 90, we'll set this to be 1360, and then back again. And I'll just put a basic easy ease on those. And then the scale. Uh, set it to be, say, 200. And actually, I might bump up the uh, sense to be 630. And I'm going to just send to the anchor point. So Control Alt Home and then Home. And I just need to redo these. So 560, copy and paste, and 1360. So we've got this, and then the scale, so 200. Uh, let's say this 40 and then back to 200 and then F9 that so I'm just going to copy and paste both of those just so I can move these along and then the scale if I can grab it So let's try that. You'll find a free project file for this on my Gumroad and I'll pop the link below. I still can't decide if this scale and exposition thing looks crap or not. So what I've done is included the version without. So you've got both options as well as this version where I've duplicated it and staggered it in time. By the way, I'm not blind, and you probably noticed a bit of jankiness with the way that the, especially on the right-hand side here, the letters bunch up together. It's not completely smooth, and I think one of the reasons for that is the way that different fonts adjust their weight can affect them in different ways. So if we look here, by the way, did you guess the limited series that I was talking about earlier on? No, you probably didn't care. So this font obviously was used in the titles for The Beast and Me. And the reason I mention it, if you'll excuse some brief but shameless self-promotion on my part, is that I'm going to discuss these titles in next week's episode of Motion Designer Reacts. This is a new series I've started where I look at title sequences. You can watch the first four episodes right now, and I'll be releasing new episodes every other Friday. If you're interested, no. stay tuned to the end of this video, and I'll add a short teaser. Anyway, back to these variable fonts. As I say, you want to pay attention to how the weight affects the letters so in this case the characters as we adjust the font axis weight they're spreading out but then after a certain point they stop spreading and then they just sort of bunch in and it gets thicker so you want to allow for that when you're doing animations like this so as promised here are some free fonts to get you started i spent a bit of time browsing earlier on today these are on adobe fonts we've already looked at obviously but rock grotesque is gorgeous i can't wait to play around with this font myself and on Google Fonts, I picked out these. I can imagine something a bit more elegant with, say, Playfair Display. It's up to you now, and I'd love to see what you come up with. Give me all you got! Pop some links. Give me all you got! Oh, fucking hell. Pop some links in the comments, and I'll definitely take a look. I've been a huge fan of text animators for a while now, and thanks to my good friend Carl Hamrick for the heads up on this update. He's a text animator nerd, and nerd generally, just like me. He doesn't need the views though, so f him. 
If you want some inspiration, check out my previous videos on kinetic type with text animators. If you replace the fonts in these animations with variable fonts and play around with the settings, I guarantee you're going to get some interesting results. But that's it for this video. As promised, I'll hand you over to this idiot for a short teaser. Hope this is useful. Thanks for watching. The teaser starts in three, two, one. In this episode of Motion Designer Reacts, I'll give you my verdict on Pixar's Elio, Ballad of a Small Player, Fantastic Four First Steps, The Roses. The sequence features sketches brought to life on a white napkin texture with elegant kinetic typography. You're actually hearing a different version of the song because Licht only had this cover. This is classic Hollywood staggered but equal billing. I think it was invented with the Tower in Inferno, where Steve McQueen plays a giant rock in the ocean and Paul Newman was a helicopter. Whatever you think of the film or these titles, this has to be a dream project for any motion designer, creating titles for a retro-futuristic film with 1960s design references. And honest to goodness, I would literally kill my grandmother for this brief. Because these sequences were made from physical materials and light, the results naturally contain small imperfections. Slight vibrations in movement, uneven edges, softness in the image, changes in contrast and visible grain. Today, the same ideas could be recreated digitally with perfect smoothness. But the reason these older titles still feel alive, direct and human is exactly because they were made by hand. The limitations didn't just shape the process, they shaped the style. Obviously, this is only a few seconds in the whole video and I'm not suggesting this is a realistic approach for a two minute long title sequence, but it's interesting seeing how far they went to achieve an analog look. It's actually after this that I sat up and took notice. I can see me. 